these papers that have been reading it pointed out that at least one study showed that um, ODD symptoms are worse in kids that struggle with peer acceptance in addition to family issues. And several studies link ODD to harsh, inconsistent or neglectful par parenting practices. So basically, when you look at the causes of ODD, we don't know what the main cause is. But from what I've picked up here, it seems that ODD is a label that we apply to kids who are unruly and who are uh, sort of, I guess, uh, defiant, for mm. want of a better word. We apply that to them when they don't fit what we think they should be doing. And that's it. It's pathologized. They've got something wrong with them internally. What does that actually do to help? You know, there are treatments for it, but I don't know if just labeling kids that are, you know, disruptive as having ODD is necessarily the most beneficial way to deal with disruptive children. I mean, I, so I want to talk about this in the conclusion, actually, but I think this is really relevant here. Um, I feel like the one thing that it does do, and it sort of links to our conversation about, about prison and things like that, um, is that by pathologizing something like uh, this sort of behavior in children, um, what we do there is we, to a certain extent, absolve them of responsibility. I joked a lot at the start about like this sounds like the pathologizing of being a dickhead or the labeling of being mm -hmm. a dickhead as a disorder. Um, but that is the external appearance that you might think of somebody who has yeah, this, right? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. you'd let, I'd be like, oh, that kid's a bit of a dickhead. Yeah. Um, and 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 by applying a label to that and saying, oh, this is a disorder, whether it's a, a, a sort of actual classical disorder or a label for a mm -hmm. set of um, set of uh, observations, to a certain extent allows that child some absol uh, some like a break from responsibility, specifically because they're a child. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you see this sort of um, behavior in an adult, then you infer guilt, you infer um, agency, mm -hmm. and you don't let them off. But because it's a child, you do. And and the framework that we use for that sometimes is a disorder. Yeah, I suppose. I think for me, having this as a disorder shows, I guess, the problems within parenting, right? If you're having trouble with your kid in this regard, and you then get the sort of ODD diagnosis. Like so often you see parents being like, oh, I'm at my wit's end. I don't know what to do. And a lot of parents are incredibly, incredibly harsh with their kids. Of course, you know, there's probably plenty of kids that have ODD that is kind of unrelated to the parenting style, you know, of their, of their carers. But my point is that, you know, a lot of parenting styles nowadays are not necessarily healthy for children. Oh my you know? gosh, this reminds me. I saw, I was walking on the street the other day and I saw a mum pushing a little boy in a pram who was mm -hmm. maybe like three or something and he put his feet on the ground and then the pram sort of jolted and he fell out on the ground mm -hmm. and she just grabbed him and started yelling at him and shoved him back in the pram and i was like what as a child that's a child <laughs> what are you doing i know that people's lives are stressful i understand that and i know that kids can be annoying as hell but yeah come on man yeah what, like that just felt it just made me really sad because like that's that's gonna be really tough for that kid if that if that kid has experienced that all the time he's not gonna grow up well like there's just no way yeah and you know i don't know the background i don't know any of the context obviously but that's not going to be a good that's not it's not going to not affect that child yeah. long term if, if that's going on all the time what one thing that's made me feel somewhat hopeful is, I guess, the sort of rise of gentle parenting. That that seems to be coming about a lot more often now. So gentle parenting, I'm just going to paraphrase it. It's it's not not giving any rules to your kids, but it's not shouting. And it's giving consequences that are sort of tied directly to the, to the things that your kid does wrong. It's talking about their emotions and trying to find better ways of dealing with them. If your kid does something wrong, you say, hey, What's going on? Why did you do that thing? Hey, mm -hmm. you've upset your brother uh, by, you know, um, taking his toys mm -hmm. when he was playing with them. What, why Why couldn't you wait? Why didn't you play with another toy? What, what was going on there? And you find out, oh, well, the kid just wanted, you know, attention from his older brother. And that's why he did that. And then mm -hmm. you find a way to say, okay, well, if you want that, then you just need to verbally say that. And if your brother doesn't do it, you can come to me and we can work it out. If your kid, you know, spills something, you don't send them to the room. You make them clean it up with you. You know, if your kid draws on the walls, you don't ground them and take away their internet access. You say, okay, you're going to help me clean this up. 
You know, like it's it's that kind of style of parenting where there's no shouting, there's no uh, consequences that aren't directly tied to the transgressions. It's all about raising a kid that is emotionally healthy and understands, you know, it, uh, understands that their actions have consequences and how to be sort of a good and nice person. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of, um, so this idea that when you're, a, I mean, obviously we may be talking from, you know, if either of us have kids, we might mm -hmm. be like, look at this episode and be like, wow, how naive. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> like, I, I know it's far more difficult oh, I know, than it seems. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. it, yeah, it's not easy at all. <laughs> but it reminds me of um, this sort of idea in psychology called transactional analysis. I'd love to do an episode on transactional analysis one day. I mean, I can do it maybe. Let's do it, Because yeah. I, I, I love it. I love transactional analysis. I trust you almost more to do the research and be objective about it, but... Um, it's very interesting as a topic anyway. But it's this idea that when you are raising a child, this is not the specific idea of transactional analysis, but this is sort of why, what I take from it from a parenting perspective, is that when you're raising a child, you are forming um, the internal sort of voice of, yeah. the, of the eventual adult that you're raising. And if you raise a child to, uh, and you're constantly critical and angry and that kind of thing, then you, that child is going to grow up with an internal voice that is critical and angry. And it's, it's I, I may be butchering this, I apologize if there's any psychology people listening. Mm. Um, we'll do, a, I'm sure we'll do a proper thing about it one day. But um, you're, you're raising this, this eventual adult to have this horrible, vindictive, mean, traumatized internal parent yeah. that's going to be very harsh on the scared internal child that exists inside that parent's head um and it's a framework that's not necessarily literally true yeah but um you are that that child is paying attention and everything you do the way you treat it is being downloaded into their brain to mediate the behavior of the eventual adult yeah and that is a massive responsibility i think what people forget people think that you know you can do whatever with kids they'll forget some stuff you know you won't you they won't will harm forget, them too much you might forget it but they won't forget the lesson <laughs> my point is that you can't choose what a kid internalizes and yeah. i'm not i'm not trying to shame parents that slip up or make mistakes or get frustrated or whatever like you know you know what i mean we're all humans that's totally fine my point is though that you you can't choose what a kid internalizes. I remember offhanded comments that my parents made yeah. to me years ago <laughs> that still affect me, and I'm not mad at I'm not mad at them for it. Like I'm not mad at my dad for this thing he said to me when I was like seven years old because he had no idea that I would still be thinking about yeah. it 17 years later. He just said it as an offhanded thing, and now I'm sitting here thinking, God damn it, why did he say that thing? What am I? How am I going to live up to this? How am I ever going to live? Like, you know, you know what wow. I mean? Like it's it, yeah. it, it it sticks there and it comes up every so often and. I think we need to be more conscious that children are people. They're people that are learning how to be people. They can't, and I've said this, you know, they, they can't necessarily verbalize or understand their emotions or how to deal with all of these different things and all of these new experiences because there are so many new experiences when you're a kid. It, it must be so overwhelming and no one takes you seriously. You don't have any autonomy. You don't get to choose what you do when you go to bed, what to wear half the time. You know, you, you, you're constantly being told what to do. And that's a really tough thing to live under. And obviously, ODD isn't just parents being bad. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that maybe pathologizing children acting out isn't the best way to deal with children acting out. Of course, there are treatments for ODD. You know, you've got um, parent, uh, parent management training um, and school-based interventions, individual therapy, you know, like CBT. You've got pharmacological therapy using uh, medication. So stimulants like are used in ADHD, which could maybe help control those impulses. Um, all, all of those, all of those sort of things, they, they can help. But I think just grouping them under ODD in that way isn't necessarily helpful. By the fact that a ton of kids with ODD have ADHD, I think you're kind of pointing out that the reason that they have the, that presentation of ODD is because they're struggling with ADHD. The kid isn't the problem here. It's the environment that the kid is in. Like, I don't think a kid with ADHD is automatically going to be a disruptive, awful, terrible person to be around just because they have ADHD. I think maybe the environment that you put them in is going to have an effect on that. I mean, like, if, if you actually look into it, kids with ADHD end up growing up to have low self-esteem and all of these other things. Like, you have depression, anxiety, because you're living in a world that isn't built for you. And that makes sense to me as to why some kids could have, you know, ODD because they're in an environment that is basically forcing them to be that way. And yes, having this disorder 
can be useful for a lot of people, but also I think it can be limiting by just looking at looking at this complex human being who is acting in a way that society deems, you know, um, not acceptable. Just looking at them and being like, you fall into this category and we're gonna deal with you the same as everyone else in this in this category. But maybe it's your parent parenting style that's coming into it along with some trauma and, you know, internal emotional problems that, that you've got going on, you know? Like, it, it's so weird to me that, that ODD almost clearly seems to be a kid struggling to deal with other stuff and we've just got, we've got that, we've got that as a disorder. There you go. We've pathologized a kid dealing with a difficult situation. There, there you go. It, it just seems so odd to me.